So anyways, about and Kanye West. I think yeah. Fiora just yeah. wanted nothing to do with that. Yeah, I was gonna say Fiora had the perfect reaction to that. <laughs> <laughs> so welcome back to Xenoblade. Um, a couple episodes ago when uh, we were, I guess plan is Melia going to go talk to Fiora just before the Telethia attacked Colony 6. Um, I picked up a side quest called Securing Provisions. Uh, it turns out that one is actually a prerequisite for uh, Fiora's fifth skill tree, so we're gonna we're gonna go take care of that. Ah, oh, just take uh, a casual jaunt through this level 95 area. Yeah, fuck the guy who wants all the provisions here in Tefra Cave, like... <sighs> so, his deal is he's uh, sheltering some high Entia refugees over at the old refugee camp in the Bionis Leg, and he, he needs supplies, and for some reason the supplies are deep in level 90 territory. I mean, duh. I mean, I guess that's one way you can ensure that no one's gonna steal them. I like to think this was just like a panicked uh, thing where because the refugee situation is like very recent, it could only have been done in you know a fraction of the time that you would need to actually plan such a thing. Hmm. It's like, ha, oh, we didn't realize that was a level 90 territory. <laughs> also, the supplies are guarded by this unique monster. But and yeah. another... Look, look how hard it was to run past <laughs> it. <laughs> I mean, the thing is, though, when you're in combat, you can't get anything. Yeah, <laughs> so... To, to even do this quest, you gotta be able to kill these things. And anyway, so that's why I hid behind boxes. Uh. And it didn't yes. exactly work, so... So, fuck it, engage casual mode. Oh, what a cheater. I'm gonna be honest, I don't know why you don't just have casual mode turned on all the time at this point. Uh... I don't know. To pretend there's at least some semblance of a challenge for the, the main game. I mean, with the, with the levels I have right now, I'm actually pretty pretty much set to just waltz right up to end game and uh, hit credits. But you won't because you like portraying this. I just want to show off some content that I think some people might be interested in. That's all. Mm. Right, yeah, come on, Jado. It's all about the content. Content is king, don't you know? Look, I've had this shackle on for months. I want to go home. Months? More like years at this point. I just want to see my family. <laughs> <laughs> it's too late, Jado. This is home. No! <laughs> <laughs> okay, my turn. It was at that moment I got that Jabo with Ryan. Yeah. Fuck! <laughs> it, it, it was at that moment that Jabo felt realized he, in fact, did love Xenoblade Chronicles. <laughs> Ryan is he my had, favorite character. It, it, he had won the battle over himself. God, this really is like Xenoblade. <laughs> 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 no, that that only counts if your other self is God. I can't believe you would think uh, I would think otherwise. <laughs> now the real question is, can you date both of yourselves at the same time? Absolutely. I mean that that is kind of an interesting way to effectively <laughs> solve the love triangle of this game. Just both Fiora and Melia get a Shulk that they can glom onto now. I mean, <laughs> somehow I don't think that's what Artix was alluding to. You see, you see Artix, it's called narcissism. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that Gogol there and its unique monster brethren was guarding a key to the actual storehouse. So wait, this wasn't even the supply place? No, the supply place is over here at Villa Lake. What the fuck? I like how Chaos says that they are guardian as if they were doing this like willingly or knowingly. 
I don't fucking know. Look, the emergency warehouse is yes. here, but the it, key got lost over there somehow. Look, it it blunts the impact of you just brutally murdering them if you assign agency to them after the fact, okay? Mm, yeah, I've noticed Chaos doing that very frequently. hi <laughs> This is, uh, I think, I believe me remembering that, uh, the side quest marker only shows up if you're actually on the map, where the, uh, side quest marker is. Hello. Once we've uh, completed securing provisions, Dolan will move inside the refugee cave. Hello. And he'll have uh, some more quests for us to do. So, this guy has lost a key, he's managed to also uh, not acquire some special lily. Are we sure this guy's name isn't Belen? <laughs> hmm. Either that or Dullard. <laughs> like, all you gotta do is change one letter. Alright, so we're we're gonna go pick up this flower for the dullard. You know, I'm not in a hurry, but so you know, if you wanna go kill God or something in the meantime, I guess that's okay. <laughs> if you see any dissatisfied gogos, just leave them be, please. <laughs> They're already miserable. If I remember right though, the reward for doing this quest is actually pretty good because it's the only source of, for a. Uh, Fiora's Sword Drones X talent art, which uh, is the third and last level of, you know, that skill. Uh, this is also kind of a, kind of a weird quest because you can get it basically whenever Makana's core is over, but you actually can't complete it because there's a bunch of other quests that we have to first pick up inside Tefra Cave before we can even get to the Lily. So, from the Villa Lake, we have to go up along this passageway. Down through the cave over here. And, uh, just happen upon some ruins. The, uh, Falgar tomb, to be precise. I got another ominous cut there. Finally, that was probably me. <laughs> that was probably me seeing that. Uh, I I'd hit a uh, like t the two hour mark on my recording and just restarting it. Finally, now we get to exhume and kill God. <laughs> yes, exactly. all variations of killing God have been completed. <laughs> Ah, uh, see, God is God is alive, dead, and undead. <laughs> the real Holy Trinity. So, I don't know if you guys remember all those, like, 
quests we did way back when that got us like some giant treasures, but this is this is gonna be the last of those quests. And then once we have all the treasures, we can actually use them to go uh, to uh, achieve another quest. Nice and oh, all this so time. We're we're, uh, we're we're archaeologists. I see. Yeah. Yes. Yes. We are playing archaeologist. Uh, so we can get this damn flower for the dullard. Yeah, it's nice to basically know that all this time we've just been effectively running around hoovering up all of Dixon's knickknacks from his previous life. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Yeah, that, that's the thing about Rhine Time. It has its own special set of rules. It's kind of like Steiner math in a way. <laughs> Not gonna lie, I would like Ryan a lot more if he bust if he just like randomly busts out Steiner math at some point. <laughs> you know, they say all men are created equal. <laughs> I mean, Ryan is a genetic freak, and he's not normal, so he's kind of halfway there. He spells just as well as Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm just oh, waiting Ryan. for him to tell Zanza that he has a 166 and a third chance of winning. <laughs> Shulk just looks at him and he's like, that's not how math works, Ryan. <laughs> But what happens when you add Kurt Angle to the mix, though? What is it? Well, the numbers don't lie, and they spell disaster for you. <laughs> Jeez, I should not have <laughs> taken a drink at that point. So once we give her the book that was just kind of over on the cliff of, in the Villa Lake, for some reason, uh, she's gonna read it and figure out how to open the tomb. You know, I appreciate for a second there, Ryan started his little shadow boxing animation. So it looked like immediately after she told him to shut up, she was trying to concentrate. Ryan was about to deck her in the face. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I think you'll find this just spelled disaster and sacrifice for you. <laughs> Cause I got a 66.6% 6 chance of winning. Cause Ricky God. knows he, he's not even gonna try. Like. Honestly, like, my favorite clip of Scott Steiner has nothing to do with, like, his actual wrestling career. Like, apparently, like, he actually, like, at one point owned, like, a franchise restaurant somewhere down in Atlanta. <laughs> yes. And, like, th there was, like, a massive car accident or something in front of it, so, like, they were interviewing witnesses, and, like, he actually came out and gave an interview to the local news, and they didn't even acknowledge that he was Scott Steiner. He was just <laughs> credited as a man who owns a restaurant. <laughs> That, that's pretty funny. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, the alternative was that the local news media would have to attempt to explain Steiner math. And... <laughs> <laughs> or even worse, Steiner's very, I uh, use this term very liberally, command of the English language to people. <laughs> you see, the real reason why they didn't put his name on, on the Chiron was to avoid libel. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Alright, so we need to go rip out this de the heart of Dazzling Colos Colosmia? You know, as uh, one does. Also, I'm, I'm taking offense to all this. Spiders don't have hearts. Apparently this one does. That was great, guys! Now you're talking my language. 
I know, for some reason, this specific heart is the uh, key to opening the tomb. Yeah, the ancients can just tell when you, like, got a heart from some random spider, and they're like, no, 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 that shit don't fly here. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta be the heart of Dazzling Colosnia. Because what they haven't figured out is that it's like Raiders of the Lost Ark, where it's all based on weight, and they just never tried the <laughs> to fill God. bags of sand. You bastard, <laughs> I was about to make a Temple of Doom joke because that actually does involve ripping out a heart at some point. <laughs> <laughs> uh, go ahead. <laughs> the stage is yours. <laughs> no, the, the the moment's passed, unfortunately. Uh, also, I'm, I'm at least... Uh, I'm at le ma. I was gonna say, uh, like, I'm at least hoping that Xenoblade will at least be slightly less racist than Temple of Doom was, <laughs> but uh, you never know. I mean, we did spend literally half a game learning that actually robots are people too, and maybe we shouldn't literally murder them all. Yeah, let's not genocide all the robots. <laughs> yeah, you're you're saying this with Ryan as party leader. Yeah. yeah. Because... Also, of course, also, remember, we only had that revelation after our girlfriend turned into one, and therefore it directly affected us. Hmm. And... Also, let us not forget that the ultimate lesson of the Mikata's plotline is that the robots also want to attack and dethrone God. So we found common ground in the end, and then Zanza murdered everyone, but anyway. Man, this colonialism metaphor is getting weird. <laughs> You know what occurs to me? I'm pretty sure that was a purple spider? Hmm. Well, yeah, the, the spider was purple, but you, you don't know if the heart was white or not. Hmm. I suppose that checks out. Very strong reaction to being presented the heart. What is it? Also, that that was a very underwhelming tomb entrance reveal. I gotta say, <laughs> like the the altar implies that something more would have happened, but uh, nah, just secret panel. You could have get it, like you could have fucking blown that up with some dynamite for God's sake. Just glad that uh, yeah, I was like, ah, oh, you know, really strong reaction from this lady. And it's like, yeah, you go ask for a bison heart, and when someone comes back successfully, you too will be surprised. <laughs> 